The story of African genetic origins is far more complex and nuanced than often portrayed in simplified narratives. Archaeological and genetic evidence reveals that between 50,000 and 12,000 years ago, the continent was home to deeply divergent human lineages. The Hadza of Tanzania and the San of Southern Africa represent some of Earth's most ancient genetic lineages. Genomic data shows that San populations carry genetic signatures dating back more than 250,000 years. Similarly, Central African rainforest populations like the Mbuti and Biaka diverged early in human history, remaining relatively isolated in their forest environments for tens of thousands of years. Recent research from the Takakori Rock Shelter in Libya has provided remarkable insights into North Africa's genetic past. Scientists recovered whole genomes from 7,000-year-old naturally mummified remains, revealing a previously unknown population that had likely occupied the region for tens of thousands of years. These individuals carried a distinct North African lineage that diverged from sub-Saharan African populations. Despite their genetic isolation, evidence suggests they engaged in cultural exchanges with surrounding populations, highlighting how genetic isolation doesn't necessarily mean cultural isolation. As mentioned before, between 30,000 and 15,000 years ago, Africa's human populations were fragmented into genetically distinct regional groups. Ancient DNA and analyses of modern genomes reveal that these included Proto-Saharan, East African foragers, early Nile Valley populations, and Central African rainforest hunter-gatherers. Unlike Eurasia, which experienced a major population bottleneck, Africa maintained high internal genetic diversity throughout this period. A groundbreaking study published in Nature analyzed genome-wide ancient DNA from six individuals from Eastern and South Central Africa, spanning the past 18,000 years. This research, which doubled the time depth of sub-Saharan African ancient DNA, revealed that the ancestry of early hunter-gatherers could be modeled as a geographically structured mixture of three highly divergent source populations. These ancient genetic divisions reflect interactions dating back 80,000 to 20,000 years ago. This genetic structure aligns with archaeological evidence of increasing regionalization at the end of the Pleistocene, when artifacts and cultural traditions like rock art began to diversify into distinct regional patterns. The genetic findings confirm that this phenomenon affected not only cultural traditions, but also the flow of genes between populations. The discoveries at Gobero, the oldest known cemetery in the Sahara Desert, dating to around 8000 BC, provide additional evidence of this population structure. Located in Niger's Tenere Desert, Gobero has yielded a wealth of information on how early humans adapted to environmental changes. Excavations revealed that the site was inhabited almost continuously for 5,000 years, beginning around 8000 BC, when the area fronted a large lake. The skeletal remains from Gobero show distinctive physical characteristics that correspond to different population groups who inhabited the region at different times. Between 12,000 and 5000 BC, a dramatic environmental transformation occurred as the African humid period turned the Sahara into a lush, habitable savanna, crisscrossed with rivers and dotted with lakes. This green Sahara facilitated migrations and admixture between previously isolated populations. Genomic studies from ancient Saharan burials at sites like Takarkori and Gobero reveal a complex mixture of North African and Sub-Saharan genetic components. This period saw increased contact between Sahelian foragers and North African populations that carried Eurasian-like ancestry, creating new genetic patterns across the region. At Gobero, archaeologists identified two distinct occupation phases by different cultural groups. The Kifian culture, 7,700 to 6,200 BC, consisted of tall, muscular hunter fishers who left distinctive wavy line pottery. After a period of abandonment due to aridification, the site was reoccupied by the Tenerian culture, 5,200 to 2,200 BC, who had different physical characteristics and cultural traditions. Isotopic analyses of burials show that the earlier Kifian people were largely sedentary, while later populations showed increasing signs of mobility. Between 5,000 and 3,000 BC, cattle herding emerged in northeastern Africa, particularly around Sudan and Egypt, and began spreading across the continent. This lifestyle innovation was accompanied by genetic markers that can still be traced today. Y-chromosome haplogroup EM2 and mitochondrial DNA lineages like L3F and T1A are associated with these early pastoralist populations. These genetic signatures spread into the Sahara and East Africa as herding communities expanded their territories. 
Ancient DNA from Kenya and Sudan has confirmed the genetic links between these regions and early Nilotic-speaking pastoralists. The R1-BV88, Y-chromosome lineage, which is uncommon in sub-Saharan Africa, but prevalent among Chadic-speaking populations in the Lake Chad Basin, traces back to migrations from North Africa into this region. This genetic marker provides tangible evidence of these early pastoralist movements and their lasting impact on African genetic diversity. From approximately 4000 to 2000 BC, East Africa experienced significant genetic admixture from populations associated with Afro-Asiatic and Cushitic languages. Genetic components similar to ancient Levantine groups, particularly the Natufians, entered the Horn of Africa during this period. These migrations introduced West Eurasian-related ancestry into the Horn of Africa. It's important to note that this wasn't European-derived ancestry, but rather came from ancient Near Eastern populations. This genetic influx coincided with the spread of Afro-Asiatic languages and contributed to the unique genetic mosaic seen in the Horn of Africa today. The discovery of Baira, a 4,500-year-old male buried in Mota Cave in southwestern Ethiopia, has provided valuable insights into this period. His genome, the first complete ancient genome recovered from the African continent, helps tell the story of how people were utilizing the Ethiopian highlands at this time. The Mota Cave site contains evidence of significant technological, subsistence, and cultural changes, including the beginnings of food production in the region over the last two millennia. Archaeological evidence from the eastern margin of Kenya's Chalbi Desert further illustrates the presence of diverse populations during this period. Excavations of cairns, belonging to the Cushitic-associated Savannah Pastoral Neolithic Stone Bowl culture, yielded remains of tall individuals of Caucasoid physical type, with one 6 feet 4 inches male skeleton dating to around 3,500 years ago. This contrasts dramatically with the 5 feet 1 inch Mota individual from roughly the same time period, highlighting the physical diversity of populations in East Africa. One of the most significant demographic events in African history occurred between 1000 BC and 1000 AD with the expansion of Bantu-speaking populations. Originating near the Nigeria-Cameroon border, these farmers carried distinctive genetic signatures as they spread agriculture, ironworking, and their languages across Central, Eastern, and Southern Africa. Y chromosome haplogroup E1b1a and mitochondrial DNA haplogroup L2a are strongly associated with Bantu-speaking populations. Genomic data confirms that as Bantu speakers expanded, they largely replaced or admixed with local foragers in many regions, including the ancestors of today's San and rainforest hunter-gatherer populations. Recent genetic research has refined our understanding of this expansion. A study published in Science Advances analyzing ancient genomes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda and Botswana demonstrated the contraction of diverse, once contiguous hunter-gatherer populations as Bantu farmers advanced. The findings reveal more complex trajectories of admixture than previously suggested, showing that in Botswana, Bantu ancestry postdates admixture between pastoralists and foragers. This indicates an earlier spread of pastoralism than farming to southern Africa. The Bantu expansion transformed not only the cultural and linguistic landscape of sub-Saharan Africa, but also its genetic composition. Today, the majority of people in Central, Eastern and Southern Africa carry genetic signatures linked to this massive population movement, though the proportions vary significantly by region and population. Between 500 BC and 1500 AD, the rise of powerful empires like Ghana, Mali and Songhai facilitated long-distance movement of people and genes across the Sahel. Populations across this region display mixed ancestry, combining Niger-Congo, Berber and Nilotic influences. As mentioned earlier, Y-chromosome lineages like R1-BV88, rare in sub-Saharan Africa but common in Chadic speakers, provide evidence of migrations from North Africa into the Lake Chad Basin. The Sahel acted as a crucial conduit for genetic exchange between North and West Africa. Trans-Saharan trade routes that transported gold, salt and other commodities also facilitated gene flow between populations on either side of the desert. This can be seen in the genetic admixture present in many Sahelian populations today, which often combine elements from both North African and Sub-Saharan ancestries. Archaeological evidence from urban centres like Timbuktu and Gao reveals the cosmopolitan nature of these societies, with material culture reflecting diverse influences. 
From approximately 500 to 1600 AD, East African coastal populations were transformed by maritime trade across the Indian Ocean. Genetic studies show that Swahili coast inhabitants today carry 30 to 50% ancestry from Arabian, Persian and Indian traders who settled in the region. Ancient DNA from medieval Swahili graves confirms this admixture, especially in elite burials. The pattern of gene flow was predominantly male-mediated, with local African maternal ancestry persisting alongside paternal lineages from Asia and the Middle East. This pattern reflects the historical practice of foreign merchants marrying local women and establishing trading communities along the coast. The Swahili civilization that emerged from these interactions created a distinctive cultural and genetic blend. Architectural styles, culinary traditions, religious practices and linguistic features all reflect this fusion of African and Asian influences. The Swahili language itself, though fundamentally Bantu in structure, contains thousands of loanwords from Arabic, Persian and other languages of the Indian Ocean trade network. This genetic admixture was not limited to coastal populations. As trade networks extended inland, genetic contributions from Asian sources gradually diffused into interior populations, though at lower frequencies. The impact was greatest in urban centres and along major trade routes, creating genetic gradients that can still be detected today. Between 700 and 1800 AD, trans-Saharan slave routes resulted in the forced movement of people across the Sahara, further mixing genetic patterns between sub-Saharan and North African populations. This tragic chapter in African history left lasting genetic signatures that can be traced today. North African populations now show genetic components from sub-Saharan Africa, especially West Africa, alongside Mediterranean and Near Eastern admixture. This complex genetic picture reflects centuries of human movement across the Sahara, including both voluntary migration and the forced transportation of enslaved individuals. The slave trade operated in multiple directions, though predominantly northward. In some Libyan and Moroccan communities, sub-Saharan genetic markers account for 15 to 25 percent of the total ancestry, with the highest proportions found in southern regions closer to traditional trade routes. Mitochondrial DNA studies have been particularly informative for tracing these historical connections, as they allow researchers to identify maternal lineages carried northward by enslaved women. Sub-Saharan mtDNA haplogroups like L1, L2 and L3 are now found at significant frequencies in many North African populations, providing a genetic record of this historical tragedy. From 1500 AD to the present, European colonization and global trade brought minor European genetic influence to coastal West Africa and more substantial European and Asian admixture to certain regions, particularly South Africa. The coloured population of South Africa represents a unique genetic blend of African, European, primarily Dutch and British, and Southeast Asian ancestries. Despite these recent inputs, the core African genetic structure remains resilient and largely intact across most of the continent. In most African populations, non-African genetic contributions represent a relatively small fraction of the total ancestry, except in regions with specific historical circumstances, like South Africa and parts of North Africa. The colonial period also saw the forced transportation of millions of Africans to the Americas through the transatlantic slave trade. Studies of African-American genetics have provided insights into the African origins of these populations. Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA analyses reveal connections to specific regions of Africa, particularly West and West Central Africa. For example, at Avondale Burial Place in Georgia, dating between 1820 and 1950 AD, researchers identified typical African mtDNA haplogroups, L0, L1, L2 and L3, among African American remains. In recent decades, advances in genomic technology have allowed for more detailed analyses of African genetic diversity. These studies consistently confirm Africa's position as the centre of human genetic variation, with greater diversity among African populations than in all other human populations combined. This remarkable genetic richness reflects Africa's deep human history and the complex interactions that have shaped its populations over tens of thousands of years. Africa's genetic story reminds us that human history is rarely linear or simple. It is a dynamic process of movement, interaction and adaptation that continues to shape humans.